Well, more than 1.3 million prospective college students took the ACT standardized test in 2022. Less than half a percent of them earned a perfect score of 36. And that group includes Jack Paris of Loyola High School, a standout offensive and defensive lineman for the Cubs. It's no wonder he's heading off to MIT. Our Chris Harey has more on this week's hometown hero. I don't want to click it. <laughs> You, you gotta click it. Okay. Do it. I got in. <laughs> MIT is known for its, you know, its academic prestige, but one of the things I really liked is that the students there, I, from the two visits that I took, I found them to be like just as fun as they are smart. I need you to explain what the ACT is for people who may not know. Sure, yeah, it's a, um, a standardized test, a little different from the SAT because there's a science section instead of a non-calculator math section. And you got a perfect score. I did, yeah. When you got that result, what was your reaction? My reaction is, and I think it was the same with my mom and my dad and my sister, is that they were just really excited. Um, I had been you know, studying for a long time, just practicing, 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 practicing. Some people were a little surprised, like they didn't know that uh, I don't know, maybe that I was smart enough to get to get that score. They they just didn't expect it. Um, so a lot of people, they, they were they were really happy for me. We all knew Jack was smart. Getting the perfect score is just ridiculous. We got a lot of smart guys that come through, and I've never heard of it. Uh, but there was a lot of razz. And when he'd miss an assignment on the offensive line, it's like, how could you get a perfect 36 and not block out, you know? But uh, no, it's amazing. You know, just proud of him. To get a perfect score, that means that you are relentless in the classroom. And I know what it takes to be a high school football player, especially at Loyola. Uh, why don't you describe for me what your workload was like, especially during the football season? During the football season, we had uh, practice every day, except for Friday and uh, Sunday, Friday we had a game. So it was, uh, school ends at two, we had like office hours until 2.30, and then you know Monday and Wednesday we'd have a lift at 2.45, uh, do that for about an hour, and then uh, sometimes watch some film and go to practice around four. Uh, and then the practice would finish anywhere from like, usually around 4.15, 4.30. Usually like I got home, you know, 6.45, 7, I'd put my phone in another room and just do, do work for several hours straight, just try to get everything I could done. And I had to take advantage of my weekends as where I had more time to do more homework. How has football, just, just the sport and everything that comes with it, the camaraderie, the locker room, um, the hours of film work, uh, the physical work, practices. How has that transferred over into your everyday life that allows you to maintain that high standard of excellence? I think just having that strict routine of, you know, you have to be here at this time and we're gonna put in two hours of good work or three hours of good work. And that discipline and that strict schedule, I had to do three hours of homework exactly. I didn't have time to be on my phone for an hour and just, you know, kind of slack off. I knew I had to have the discipline to, to avoid the distractions and, and get my work done. Well, what we talk about in our program is commitment, accountability, and team. And talk about being committed, right? It's whatever you're doing, be the best you can. And then accountability, right, to yourself, um, to your teammates, to your family, to your school. That means being on time, that means not missing. It means getting, doing the work you're supposed to do. And I think most importantly, team is right. It's that caring for each other. He really is perfect example of the experience of so many kids here. Started out as, out as a freshman, something took hold of him in freshman year, which is why he's the big brother now, wants to get back. It's one of those great stories about Loyola that I think speaks to all that we do and all that we are as an institution in the formation of these young men into the people they're supposed to be. You're wearing it on your chest, Loyola, from athletics to academics. How has this school shaped you? Everything I, I do, I try to, like, it's on the football field and, and uh, in volunteer work that I do on the side, I always um, try to be, be a man for and with others, like, uh, always uh, look out for my teammates, look out for my friends, look out for uh, other people who I might not even know, just always trying to look out for other people and help them out if I can.